Welcome. This video is a, a training tutorial video intended for newer commanders uh, that are working through the challenge scenarios to try and brush up on their uh, piloting skills. Uh, we're going to be focusing on the incursion competent. I'm going to be playing this uh, kind of winging it, so to speak. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to avoid fire, and then I'm going to address my fire groups real fast to make sure that they are functioning the way that I want them to. You'll notice that while I do this, I am focusing on staying behind them. Now, obviously, in the main game, you're not going to have to do this kind of multitasking. Assuming I'm playing properly from the get go. So what I just did is I deployed my landing gear to do what's referred to as a boost break. That helps you maneuver quicker by muting your forward thrust. Um, it's not a commonly used tactic, but it is something that helps a lot. Um, another thing that you will recognize is that I am using my pip settings. Uh, balancing between uh, engines and weapons, but I do not remain static with pip settings. Um, being able to change your pip settings is something that you're able to do with relative ease. So you want to make sure that this plane is more accessible, so if you want to keep them on the mouse, um, get them off of the air keys and move them somewhere else, because having to lift either one of your hands to change your, your pips, uh, is going to really mess with your combat capability um, to the point where you'll almost be completely useless. I'm doing another boost break here. Alright, so first target's down. Where the ship's equipment in these scenarios coming to light. In the main game, if I was fully maxed out on this ship, uh, especially if I had engineering, I'd be able to boost as frequently as I wanted. Now, you'll notice another thing is when I shoot the target, uh, especially if he's not already shooting at me, he becomes a bit more defensive. Uh, this is true of all NPC targets. Uh, the more interactions you have on them uh, of different types, the more defensive they become. So if you scan it uh, with like a kill warrant scanner and then you shoot it, um, both of those kind of stack making it more defensive because they the AI wants to avoid both of those interactions. Um, now, one of the other important things here is I am heavily using vertical and lateral thrusters. Uh, right now I'm full strafe right. I'm strafing down. Well, I'm not strafing anymore. Uh, but right now I'm strafing upwards while strafing. Uh, flying forwards and uh, doing a straight, slight left strafe there to achieve that maneuver that I just did. And what that's helping me accomplish is go through and uh, close the distance between us faster so that I am able to stay on his tail more easily. Like right now, I boosted. That was an inappropriate boost timing and it caused me to overshoot him. Now. Okay, this is a 
Diamondback Scout. I'm doing forward thrust while pitching towards him. I'm sorry, not just forward thrust, also uh, vertical thrust up. It's really, really important to make sure that you uh, have thruster control over everything. So right there, I just used most of my weapons capacitor, but I'm trying to also make sure that I keep power and systems when he has a firing solution on me to reduce the damage, because the more pips and systems that you have, the stronger your shields are as it applies a damage multiplier, uh, re damage reduction multiplier based on how many pips you have. Uh, Notice my system's capacitor is empty. I want to keep recharging my shields. So I'm going to shift pips over and focus on using my multi cannons, which use minimal power. Now I'm doing a 1 4 1 pip laid out so that I can contain, uh, maintain a high speed maneuvering while still charging both my systems and weapons capacitors since I'm focusing on using my projectiles at the moment. Pip management is extremely important. Um, I was a waste of multi-cannon ammo because they're better against shields. Um, weapon pips are important with the regards that the more pips you have in weapons, the faster the capacitor reach ends, but the more pips and capacitor that you have present also affect the heat generation of your weapon slowdown. So if I fire my beam lasers on this build with uh, almost no weapons capacitor and zero pips and weapons, the result of that is going to be that I'm going to generate a lot more heat on my ship uh, a lot faster. Now I'm introducing a an FAO toggle because this other ship is able to actually uh, challenge the Viper's maneuverability. Oh, no, I didn't switch my weapons load out. Fire groups rather. So I'm also going to do another little trick here that I use to make it easier to aim, fix weapons and target, and this is just simply targeting a subsystem on the ship, uh, such as the power plant uh, or shield generator or what have you, uh, which gives you the little red box that you see over this diamond back right now. And that just makes it easier to see it when it's further away, where you can barely see the hull. So you have an aim point while it's at further distances. Now, one of the other things that you also uh, be able to notice over time is the further you are from the target, uh, the less damage your weapons will do due to what's called fall off damage. So if I want my weapons to do full damage, I need to get closer uh, with beam lasers that uh, that, that distance is about 600 meters before it starts uh, reducing in damage. So I did a boost break combined with flight assist off there in order to uh, get his hold down a bit more, but unfortunately I didn't... Uh, in properly and get that last one percent and he is really pushing me uh, trying to avoid my fire he's down all right I 
next target. because the more pips and engines, of course, the better maneuver and higher speed you can maintain. On top of the speed of the capacitor, uh, recharge, allowing you to boost more frequently. that uh, do course correction so that you maintain a uh, trajectory consistent with your ship's orientation. Um, however, if you leave the landing gear deployed, which is required to uh, do a boost break, then what you wind up with is a significantly reduced speed, which can actually cause you a lot more problems if you're not, uh, not doing it right. Occasionally, when I do this, uh, I will forget to put it back up immediately. Now, you'll also notice that I am very, very quickly assigning my pips. Uh, this is because I am using macros. This is something that is extremely common. Especially against uh, or amongst the uh, more experienced players who've been playing for a long time uh, on PC. Okay, so there's that target. All right, so now we've got a Viper Mark IV. The Viper Mark IV is not as fast, but it has better lateral and vertical thrusters, uh, which potentially makes it a much more agile opponent in a lot of scenarios than the Viper Mark III that I'm flying in this demonstration. Which means that we ought to really use all of the tricks at our disposal to make sure that we stay on target, because it's not only slightly more agile with the vertical and lateral thrusters, but uh, also has um, armor and fitting capability. You'll notice that as the waves progress, uh, power distribution management is getting more and more taxing because I'm having to use more power to avoid their fire. And when they are firing at me at these higher waves, they are doing more damage due to having better equipment. Shields offline. 
And as far as flight assist off is concerned, I recommend making that key... Oh, damn it. I thought I already got his whole zero. I recommend making that key something that you can access and click in a reflexive manner uh, very quickly and easily. down. Alright, so that is the competent combat tutorial. Thanks for watching.